I'm Madi with Madi Sews, and thanks for hanging with me, you all. So today's another Friday Sews where I get to tell you all about what has been on my sewing machine, what I have coming up, and also I get to tell you a little bit about life and give you some behind the scenes kind of stuff. So it's actually really funny because when I was preparing for this video, I thought, oh man, I really haven't sewn anything. But you know, you all, that is so not true because I made this. I made a bag using some of the leather that I had picked up this summer. And you all, I just, <laughs> I cannot believe that I made this thing. I have just been really into sewing with leather. It's been leather everything lately. And oh, so this bag itself is actually the Aspen Crossbody Bag by Emmeline Patterns. And as always, I'm going to make sure that I leave all of the information down below over here so that way you can just click on the links and you can find the patterns and basically you can get to anything that I'm mentioning. This bag comes in two different sizes, and I made the size small. This bag has five pockets, so it has these two outside pockets on the back, and then there's a zipper pocket under here. Maybe you can see inside. It probably doesn't even matter if you see inside. <laughs> but I did add in that zipper, and you all, I was actually really... I was really impressed with the instructions. I followed the tutorial that is online. Well, it's actually here on YouTube. And it, she just gave so many tips and tricks on how to actually put this together. And I followed her instructions for the wax canvas, but I made a couple of alterations because I was, I, I was using leather. And so some of the things where you were folding it multiple times just really wasn't gonna work for me. Um, one part in particular that sticks out was this piece right here. She had you folding in both edges so that it was like that and then you fold it down. Well, that doesn't really work for leather. So I ended up cutting two pieces of leather that was a rectangle and I sewed them together. Next time I think I'll actually apply them with rivets on the outside and I think it'll just be an easier construction. Oh, let me show you the top. So there is a zipper over here at the top and I actually really do like the way it's recessed down into the bag there. So let's unzip. And it's fully lined. I did just choose a red, I think it was one of the Moda cottons from Joann's. So I picked up some red and you can see I put my label down in there. And there's a zipper pocket right here. And that's actually where you flip the bag so that it's right side out. Um, when you're sewing this bag together, you leave a hole down at the bottom of that pocket. And that's, that's how you basically like flip it all right side out. And it, it was not easy, <laughs> but I did it. There's also two additional pockets in here. I have that one and then this one right over here. And for actually the larger pocket here, I decided that I wanted to make sure that it would fit my iPhone in there with the case on it. And so I can't show you my iPhone because, I, well, I'm filming from it, but here's the case. And you can see it does fit really nicely down in there. So that fits like a dream. I, you all, uh, I would have never thought that I'd be able to make a bag and to have it just kind of look this good, I think it's really good when you can impress yourself every now and then. And I think that that's what this bag has done to me. And then look at the bottom. Um, so I did do a lot of top stitching on the leather and I did box out the corners here. And then when it came to the actual straps, I made them out of my fabric. 
the cheetah print that I use is not leather. That was a stretch woven. And actually, I had seen that Okla Roots had done a video where they had talked about how to use a stretch woven fabric in your bags. And so I used her tricks. Now make sure to link to that in the description box below in case you're interested in that. She spoke really highly about using stretch wovens. And I have to admit, it, I, I do think that it created a really good result here. And then I did use that for the straps here. I interfaced the heck out of these things. So there's no more stretching going on with any of this. But really, that fabric has been in my stash now for years. And so I was stoked when I decided to put this bag together and I thought that it would be a really good match. You can see I use one of these, I think this is called a swivel hook. I picked this up from Joann's and it actually came with the D-rings here. This was a whole little kit. I also picked up all of these zippers from Joann's as well. Because I use leather for this bag and leather has a bit more body than a quilting cotton would, even like an interface cotton typically would. Um, I didn't use any of the additional foam or anything, but I did put a stiffer interfacing down here on the bottom so that way the bag would hold its shape a little better. Um, but I mean, all in all, that's... <laughs> How fun is this bag? You are, I'm gonna be making more of them. I'm gonna make them, I'm gonna make so many. I don't, I don't, I don't need that many, but I, I'm going to be making some more bags. <laughs> and honestly, I don't know how many crossbody totes I actually need. So if you have a favorite pattern that you've used to make a bag, leave it in the comments below because I definitely want to check it out. Um, I, 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 I'm, fe I'm feeling like I'm on a roll here. So leave me your bag suggestions down there. The next two things that I want to tell you about are actually not sewing related, more so crafting related. So last weekend when I was sitting down and watching movies and just hanging out with a family in front of the TV, I decided to pull out some of my leather scraps and actually let me go and get them so you can see what I've been kind of working with. <laughs> I store them all in my candle jars, <laughs> but you can see I have yellow leather scraps here. So I really do want to use as much of it as possible. So I've been making earrings and you all, I've got, I've got some fun ones. So check out these little dangly ones. <laughs> Aren't they adorable? And you all, if you want to see a tutorial on how I make any of these, just let me know. I, I know that this isn't a crafting channel, but if you are interested, just leave me a little note. And then I also made these flower ones right here. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this reminds me of kind of like a flamenco. Maybe it's because of all the ruffles and that's what I, I don't know, that's what I envision on like a tango dress, flamenco dress. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look at these, you all. So I actually use some of the smallest bits to make these earrings right here. And let me see if I can just get you a better shot here. So there are a bunch of little tiny triangles that I cut out. I glued them together and I put a little strip of leather here on the back and then put them on a post. How cute are those? And I made sure to actually make them so that they're going in opposite directions. You see that? So when they're on the ears, they're flaring out. I definitely have to make more of these. So I'm thinking about making some of those purple ones with yellow and with, oh, that's more purple, and with red. I'm gonna have a blast these next couple of days just kind of making a whole bunch of little tiny earrings. <laughs> so this next one is actually more sewing related. I made buttons! I made a bunch of little resin buttons. I made some clear resin ones with gold and black 
flex in it. <laughs> and then this one I made with the same resin, but I added some mica powder down into it, as well as some of that like fuchsia or pink colored gold foil. Here's what the foil looks like. And you all don't, don't be surprised. I mean, it is fake, fake, fake. It's actually really kind of plasticky, even though it has that metallic color to it. I also made just some plain mica colored buttons. And you all, I mean, I know, I know I'm showing you like a bunch of fuchsia, but really the reason why I was trying to make fuchsia buttons is because I finally got some pink fabric. I shot my friend's stash. Well, I'm going to be making my pink pants. And so I was thinking about actually adding on a beautiful fuchsia button. And so that's why I've been making a whole bunch. I'm excited to have all of these buttons. And actually, I learned how to make these different buttons on Skillshare. So I have a membership with Skillshare and you all, I just put in how to make buttons and up popped a tutorial where they actually show you how to make a mold out of silicone and then make your own buttons. Now these, I used a purchased mold, but I really did love just how this tutorial walked you through everything from materials to getting your buttons out of the mold. It was actually really good, you all, and I would highly recommend it. In fact, I'm gonna put a link to Skillshare in the description box so that way you can check it out. They have tons of classes. I mean, from leather working to button making, all kinds of things that can help supplement your sewing. And actually, because I really have been watching a lot of Skillshare classes, well, I actually requested to become an affiliate with them. So the link in the description box below is actually my affiliate link. So if you use it, thank you so much. Oh, I almost forgot to show you my button mold. So I'm making a button mold and you all, this thing is taking forever to cure. It's actually still a little sticky here. So I'm waiting for that tackiness to come down. But I basically took a bunch of the buttons that I already really love, like my little sheet buttons, and I'm trying to duplicate them. So that way I can make them in resin with like different colors and glitters and things like that. So I'll be sure to let you know how this turns out as soon as, as soon as I can get it out without destroying it. <laughs> you all, can you just imagine like gold foiled little sheep? They're gonna be so cute. Now let's talk a little bit about what I have planned coming up. So I really do have an entire athletic wear outfit planned. I wanna make a pair of tights and I wanna make a sports bra. And I think for this go around, I'm actually going to use some patterns from Cita Not Patterns. Um, I'm gonna try the new Sophie bra pattern that they have, but then I'm also thinking that I wanna match it with her tight patterns. Um, I'll see if I have enough fabric to work all of that out. Um, I also have another pork pie hat planned. And actually I'm making one for my father-in-law. Um, he watches my kids, you all, so whatever he wants, he gets. And so I'm going to be making him a pork pie hat, but I'm going to be using a different leather that I can custom dye. So I think that one's gonna be a tough one. And I'm really looking forward to working on that. Now let's talk a little bit about life. So we've got a lot of holidays coming up. Um, and for the most part, the majority of the family is all out of state. So I'm thinking about how I'm actually going to see family. Um, I have to see my mother. She just moved into a new place. I have to go and help her out with all of that. So I'm gonna try to work that in at some point this month, and then hopefully she can come and spend a month or two here with me and Marilyn. I really do like when she comes to visit. And then of course there's my Florida family. So, I mean, we just, we have to, we have to seriously sit down and look at the calendar and see how we're going to do all of this travel. And of course, when I travel, I wanna come with handcrafted gifts. So that's also something that's been on my mind. I've been watching Chris Christine sews a lot, actually a lot, and she's been making a lot of Christmas gifts. So I'm thinking that a lot of the things that she's been doing, like popcorn bags and stuff like that would be 
wonderful to give away for Christmas time. So I think I'm going to have to like really start doing some serious planning and stop getting distracted by all the bright and shiny stuff. <laughs> but if you have really fun handcrafted gift ideas that, you know, aren't too time intensive, hook a girl up and let me know. <laughs> if you missed my review on the Helen's Closet Yanta overalls, you can check it out right over here. Actually, I thought it was a really good pattern. I'm not sure if I'm an overalls wearer, but I really do think that that is a good pattern. And you all, until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.